Hello and welcome to Wall Plays Wesnoff for another Vlogist. So, um, I played quite a lot of Wesnoff last Vlogist, uh, recorded a number of videos and uh, they were quite well received. So, I'm back, we're going to play a little bit of Wall Wesnoff. Um, people were interested in a bit of a tutorial on how to play the game and I wasn't really sure how to go about doing that, so I thought what we'd do is we'd play the tutorial. So, here we go. Uh, please bear with me, the audio's quality is going to be not great, but hey, we have video this time, that's kind of cool. Um, the audio quality is not great because uh, A, my voice is completely wrecked at the moment, and uh, and B, um, my computer is very, very loud and I don't have a microphone. But, you know, we'll be fine, we're going to play the tutorial, and we're going to play as Conrad, because why would you play as the chick? Welcome to Wesnov. Left click on my character to select it, and you can see where you can move. Lit up places are where you can move, dark is where you can't. I'm going to move over here next to Delphador. Good morning, Delphador. Is it time to attack things? Oh, Conrad, you're so young and hot compared to last time I met you. Apparently, we had an art upgrade in this campaign. It's a training dummy. Time to learn to play. We have 32 hit points and a sword. Fairly sure we'll win. Okay, left click, left click on an opponent to attack, you see your attacks, I've only got one attack, so I've got the choice of sword or sword. I'm going to pick the sword, and I'm going to get beat up on by a Quintain, that's, that's embarrassing. Probably going to need to learn to go heal now. Yep, so if either of our characters dies, um, we lose the game because they both have crowns. Any crown character is an important character to the campaign. Um, your gold crown is your leader, silver crowns are your heroes turn-based strategy games, so now it's the opponent's turn, I'll end my turn and I'll get beat up on by a dummy. Excellent, okay, so luckily there's a village right here, collect a village, and I get healed 8 points every turn, I also collect a little bit of income for holding a village. So, move my leader to a keep, and that will allow me to recruit in any castle hexes around the keep. So you right click to recruit, and pick me up some elvish fighters. We have Gumborfil and Siliarofir. Good names. Good names. Units heal very slowly if they're just sitting in one spot, but um yeah, not as good as being in a village. Unfortunately Delphidor is not gonna help, so I have to send in my elves to beat up on this Quintain. Why I'm a guy that can recruit elves? Well, that is a mystery only explained by the Heir to the Throne campaign. Bit of a hint in the title, isn't there? Um, so, yes. Apparently Conrad can recruit elves. I'm pretty sure if you play as Lisa, um, Con you can also recruit elves. Doesn't really make sense to me, but oh well. There we go, we have successfully beaten up a Quintain and got the experience points for doing so. You get um, 8 experience points every time you kill a level 1 character, uh, 1 experience point every time you attack a level 1 character. So much more profitable to kill stuff. Shall we continue figuring it out? Yes, I don't think we've worked out how to attack stuff properly yet, do you? So then recruit ourselves some more elves and go to town on these dolls, dummy things. You can see it's night time now. Um, at this at this point, night time doesn't really matter because there's no units with alignment on the field apart from Conrad. Um, but night, uh, the time of day is a significant factor in how battles will play out in Wesnoth. We'll explain that one a little bit later on. So we could pick the bow attack with these elves if we did so. We would get less damage, but the Quintains don't have uh, don't have uh, ranged attack, so they couldn't attack back. As it is, I don't really care about the lives of these elves, so I'm happy to just throw them in against the enemies like this. Guess I'm not a very good general, but meh. If they die, they die. Kill off these Quintains. 
There you go. And since I'm not entirely confident we can take on this last dummy with just these guys we've got, we'll just end this level here. In scenario, since we've already completed the requirements of killing a dummy. End of the game, let's go on to the next level. So, here we go. Next level of training. Orcs have attacked the elves. That's pretty typical Wesnoth. Orcs are attacking the elven forest. What a disaster. So, it's a pretty generic fantasy game we're talking here. So, there are elves and there are orcs. And there are also humans, dwarves, undead, and dragons. So, dragon kind. We've got to kill that orc in the middle of the river. Then we've got to kill this leader down here. And we have to not let them burn down the forest. Should be pretty straightforward. So what we're going to do is recall the characters we had later, last time, by right-clicking on the castle when we have our Leah in the keep, and recalling our two guys with a little bit of experience, because when you have experience, as shown by the right-hand barrier, if that fills up, you get up to the um, a second level, which is going to be very handy. We're also going to recruit some other types of units. So we have some Elvis archers here, who obviously have bows, better ranged attacks than melee attacks, and we'll also recruit a cleric. I mean, Shaman, yeah. Okay, um, and when you recruit guys, they got to, like, get their gear together or something, so they can't move straight away. Uh, yes, so I collected a village here, which means that my upkeep cost went down to negative one. So every turn, I'm losing one gold to maintain the soldiers I have. Every village you get gives you two gold towards, um, you know, paying for your troops. So you need to collect villages as soon as you can, and also stop your enemy from getting them so that they don't get the gold. Um, you need gold to recruit units, that's pretty much the only reason you need it. Looks like we're going to be facing off against a lot of wolves. You can see here, elves really well positioned in the forest, they've got excellent defense, you can see 70% defense, that means there's only a 30% chance of someone attacking them, hitting them when they're standing in the forest. 10% on the road, only 20% in the water, so we're going to try and keep our elves in the forest as much as possible. Elves have got very good defense in forest, they're absolutely the best there. Alright, I'm going to send a fighter over here to this village. In fact, we're going to send both our fighters over this way. I'm going to send our shaman over here to pick up this village here. Uh, now you can see here, this guy can't move anywhere, but I can I can queue in where I want him to go next turn. So he'll go to that village at the beginning of the next turn for me. And we'll get a few more guys. Okay. And that orc is running off. And what we want to do here is try and secure that island in the middle of a map before the orcs get there. Shouldn't be too much of a trouble, those wolves. The wolves have got pretty good uh, range for orcs, but they're not the best. We've, whereas we move very fast in the forests. Ah, yes, I just skipped the bit where it explained about zone of control. So this guy controls all the area around him. All units control all the area around them. If you move into within the range of one of a unit, you are zone of control and you can no longer move in that turn. Uh, you can attack still, but you can't move. So, m positioned here, he means I can't get onto the item without fighting him. So, that's exactly what we're going to do. Nice work. Uh, it's saying I should put my healer right behind my uh, archer there so I can heal him from damage, but unfortunately my healer is not close enough, so that's not going to work. You need to be on the keep to recruit more units. Yeah, I'm not going to get a chance to do that, so I'm not going to worry about that. You've got to move your unit forward to get the attack. Alright, let's go. Here come the wolves coming up to the bridge. Now, we also need to worry, out, worry here about protecting this ford on the right-hand side, which we can't quite see here. Oh, there you go. Our Elvish friend is now telling us about it. This ford here means that units can cross the river here as well. So we're going to send our fighters down this way to grab this village and protect the ford. Okay, and we're going to get across the river. 
stick someone in the village. Okay, yep. Yeah. So we're going to do exactly the same thing to our opponents there. We're going to stick a soldier in this piece of forest so that we can zone and control the wolves. So you can see at the moment the wolves can get onto the island. If we put a guy here, they can't get past us because they get within one range and they've got to stop and fight. Okay, and the turn. So we've got the superior terrain here, so that's why the wolves are a little bit worried about attacking us. They're going to do it anyway, but... Yep. Um, so you can see these walls have very low percentage uh, of defense. They only got 20% defense in the water. So when I'm attacking them, I'm getting hitting them 80% of the time. Now it's now night time. So orcs as a chaotic faction um, get... Uh, get a bonus at night time, they do 25% more damage, and lawful units like Conrad here do 25% less damage at night time. The converse is true in the daytime, um, when humans and drakes do more damage in the daytime, uh, but they do less damage, uh, but orcs do less damage. So um, you want to time your attacks to favorable time of day for your units. Elves are neutral, so they don't care. Okay, I'm going to pull this guy back a little bit because he's injured and put this guy into the front. Attack this guy that's in the water because we get good attacks on him. Put this one on the village to heal. Drop the shaman to here so he can, she can heal all of these guys if need to. And we'll just leave this fighter sitting here. Conrad can come down the bridge as well. Um, does he have any special abilities? No. Okay, and we'll just leave our fighters down here. They, these guys can't get across the river here because once again we're controlling the zone of control here. Oh, and these elves are helpfully talking, t telling me that they need to be healed in the village, so that's okay, we can do that. You can see those wolves don't have very good attack against us when they're, um, well, their attack is fine, they don't have very good defense against us. We're hitting them for a lot of damage because they're standing in the water. So I could put Conrad here and put him in danger, but I think it's best just to wait it out. No rush here. These guys still waiting to get across the river. He's just sitting back here doing nothing. It's like he's not worried, but the uh, maybe he think he's got a lot of faith in us. Please excuse me. I'm still a little bit of cold. Oh yes, now they're telling me I need to defend this point. I've been defending it for a few turns now though, so they're a little bit behind. G tutorial, keep up. Okay, we're getting back to the daytime now. So it's it's currently um, dawn, which means neutral time, so no one's got any advantage. So the orcs are now long, no longer strong, but they're not weak yet either. Dangerous to go in the water, you shouldn't have done that. But it worked out. Getting a little bit anxious to get this finished, I think. Probably a little bit too anxious. If I get my guys killed, I'll be feeling dumb. Okay, so this uh, cleric has power on her attacks called slow, which means that this guy can now move half as far. As it is, he's zone of control, almost completely con zone of control anyway, so he couldn't go anywhere. Now that he's been slowed, he really can't go anywhere, so that's great for us. Uh, Orcish leader is here, might come across the bridge and attack us, but he's more likely to go running back here to try and recruit some more units. Yep, there he goes, running off.
Okay, we'll kill with a cleric just to give her some more experience. And then we'll make a run for it, see if we can cut this guy off before he gets back to his before he gets back to his base. We don't want to try and fight him in the day in the night time, if we can possibly help it. So if we can catch him before it gets to night time and he gets a big bonus, that would be great. Poor Archer's got no defense sitting in the water there. It's a really bad position. Oh, he's still alive though, so that's going to be painful for our guys in a bit. So you can see the, um, the healing here. The Cleric is doing four heal. You're getting eight heal in the village, so it's still better to be in a village if you possibly can. Take these villages away from the enemies as we go, and then just chase after this guy and shoot him. And miss most of the time. That happens. Okay, he's back to base, recruiting an archer, and then getting in the village to heal. That's pretty clever. Okay, so uh, if I turn off my face for a second... Uh, you see we're 10 turns into a 26 turn mission, so if we don't do it in 26 turns we lose. As it is, we should be fine. Face on. Face off. Face on. That's really cool. I like that. Okay, and then, so let's kill these. Mm, let's ki try and get as much damage as we can into this orc before it becomes uh, nighttime. Because he's going to be not fun to face if we can't kill him before the nighttime. Nighttime is the right time to run away from the orc that you love. Also, we don't want to get Conrad killed. That would be awkward to explain to his mother. Um, maybe not mother. As far as I know, Conrad doesn't have a mother. It's awkward. Okay, it looks like this orc guy is not... He's... No, he's gonna come do some damage to us that could be awkward. Alright, let's see how we go. Oh, they're gonna attack that guy. He did well. Cool. Still might die. Yeah. Goodbye, whatever your name was. You're not an important character, so I didn't even bother remembering your name. Okay, so now we clean up. Um, we can probably kill this guy with... Oh, well, we'll make sure of it, shall we? Because things like that happen sometimes. It's un very unfortunate. Can't be sure of Conrad killing that one. So... We'll just try and keep him in an advantageous position. Kill this guy instead. Oh, we could actually lose this mission. That would be really embarrassing. I hope I have a chance to retreat after this. Me too, Conrad. Okay, luckily that guy missed. No, we lost. We lost the tutorial, guys. We lost the tutorial. This was embarrassing. So, um, in our fine traditions, if I just turn off my face for a moment, you can see here in the menu, I can use the most important function of Resnoth, the uh, quick load. Okay, here we go, up against the leader again, Nothing, nothing's gone wrong yet. And this time the random number generator likes us a li little bit more. Where's not is a little bit like that, sometimes the random number generator is not your friend. And um, that's just how it goes. So, turns out Where's not is really hard, you can even lose the tutorial. Um, who knew? Oh, there we go, see? Where's not's really easy, like that's that's the tutorial done. So congratulations, we have saved the forest. And that is the base game of Wesnoth. Uh, I hope you join us next time. Um, when we talk about Orbium again, I'm gonna be running through one of the Orbium campaigns, Fall of Sylvium, which you can also get uh, on the Wesnoth add-on server. You can also download the new version of Wesnoth, which is Wesnoth 12.4, um, which is pretty good. Um, free of charge, it is a free open source game and I totally recommend it. Until next time, uh, I'm Unwise Al, have a good time.